do you send your clients unedited files or do you provide editing? Well, if that is something that you've also been asking yourself over and over again and you want the answer, well then, let's get started. Hey there, what's happening? Welcome back to Speak Easy. My name is Anna, and just like you, I'm trying to grow my freelance voiceover business. And really the purpose of this channel is to just share my tips and tricks that I have learned uh, from the past years, and also just try and answer questions that you are sending my way. And that is exactly what we're doing for the featured question of the day, which is actually two parts. So I'm only answering one part of the question today, and it is from Mello. Oh, no, that's melpamine. Oh, dearie me. So from here on in, I'm just going to call you. Oh, dearie me. Okay. So the question goes, great content that's greatly appreciated from someone who has been wanting to take the plunge. I just wanted to ask if you send your clients an unedited file or do you provide editing? So we'll stop there because I'm only addressing one question today. I have two answers to this question because it depends if you were hired as a talent only. So what do I mean by talent only? So that means you probably went to a casting call and then a the production house, the agency, or maybe the client uh, themselves called you up to tell you that you got the part. So now the next step is to go to the studio and record there. So when you go to the studio, uh, you will find the whole team there. So they have a producer, they would have a sound engineer, the editor, and maybe the client uh, themselves will be there. So all you have to do as talent only is to record a script that you were given. That means you will have to record all day until they are satisfied. They will give you the directions. They will give you the instructions. They will tell you whether you need to do it again or maybe have a safety uh, take. And they're also responsible for calling you back should they need a revision. So if ever they want to do something over again and you were not able to do it on that day, well, then they will call you back for the revision. But after that, after recording everything, all the scripts and they're satisfied, you just walk out of the studio and you're done. You're done for the job and you're paid for the job. Uh, the dirty work will have to be done by the studio themselves. So the sound engineer will have to fix all of uh, the sound nuances. And then the editor will have to go through all of your recording, no matter how long it took you to record everything. They will have to go through all of that. They were responsible for marking your good takes. So they have to look for those and just put it all together. If, if the client requires processing, they will have to do that too. You don't need to worry about those things. So that is what I mean by talent only. So that is what you have to do. In that case, you don't have to edit, all right? But I know what you're trying to say is when you're a freelance voiceover person who has their own studio at home, if that is the case, well then yes, you have to edit your file because you don't want to send an unedited file, a raw file, and have your client go through all of your mistakes. Imagine that would be a nightmare for them because they don't know where you're going, wh when you had a good take, they don't know. And imagine those long pauses. Like for me, for example, if a dog outside is barking and I know that it will come into the audio recording, I will have to stop and the pause will just be so long. And the client will be like, what is going on? Why did she stop? Oh, Oh, okay, there's a dog barking and you just don't want to do that to your client, especially if you want them to come back to you again, right? And I'm sure that they expect you to do the basic thing, okay? So the basic thing for me, the baseline of my rate is to record, clean it up and to edit. The rest I charge, but those three that comes with the initial package, okay? So how do we go about this? Like I would always tell everyone, being a freelance voiceover person 
is like a one man band. Okay. You market yourself, you talk to the client, you negotiate with your client, and then you do the whole bit. You record it. So you record it for as long as you can. And you have to make sure that you actually have a couple of good takes in there. And then you sit down in front of your DAW, your digital audio workstation, and you go through your entire file. So you have to take out all of those dogs barking, those long pauses. So yes, all of those mistakes that you went through recording, you will have to go through it again while you're editing. So hopefully that will help you kind of remember where you are. So you'll say something like, oh, this is when the dog barks. So I'll just skip that. So my tip is to clap your hands or snap your fingers when you're about to um, restart something like coming off of that dog barking. We'll just stick to the dog barking. Coming off of the dog barking, you just need to mark when you will restart again. So a double snap or a double clap will do it. It will come up on your doll. Uh, it usually comes as two uh, lines so that it will indicate, oh, so this is where I started after the dog was barking. So I don't have to listen to all of these mistakes here or the dog barking. I can just go straight there and I know that's when I restarted. Speaking of my dog, he's here talking to me. I don't know what he wants. <laughs> okay, so give me a minute. Let me uh, let him out. Hang on. And then another hard part about editing on your own is sometimes you go through a paragraph, right? And you didn't notice while you were recording that the second half of the paragraph wasn't really sounding too good. So you would have to take that first half of the paragraph and look through all of your recording just to find a good take of that second paragraph and to make sure that it will match the first paragraph of the one that you thought was a good take. So you have to combine that. So you just have to come up with ways on how to work smarter and not harder instead of re-recording it again. You can patch it up. Just make sure that it's flawless. Sometimes it would be a word. Like sometimes I would fumble on a word, just one word, but the, the rest of the take was so good. So all I have to do is look through the rest of my takes and try to find that word where I didn't fumble but would sound well with the rest of the recording. So that's just a tip for you guys. So what are the pros and cons to these two types of hiring? So what I mean is if when you're a talent only and you don't have to edit, and then when you have to do the whole shebang, well, the pros of going to a studio, of course, is it that's all it takes. You just have to record it. And once they're satisfied, you are done. The con part of it would be that you're in there with a room full of people just staring at you and and it just makes it awkward and intimidating because especially if you can't get a take right. So you would have to do it over and over again and then you would sense if they're getting agitated or antsy or if they just want to be done. So that can get intimidating, but you know, you walk out of there and you're done for the day as long as they release you. The good part about doing your own recording as a freelance voiceover is that you're just alone in your studio and you can take as many takes as you want and for as long as you're satisfied. And of course, I know you know the con of it already is that you'd have to do all the editing after you record. While it does take a long time to do that, once you find a system that works for you, editing can also be a breeze just as long as you know how to go about it the right way. I hope that answers your question. And I do want to feature a comment of the day before we end the show. So let me get to it right now. This is coming from from the YouTube comment section and it's short and sweet. It's coming from the perfect one. Wow. It says, you are brilliant. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, the perfect one. Uh, that means a lot to me. And I hope that I can keep helping you in your voiceover journey. Please do let me know if there's an actual question that you need me to answer, the perfect one, and I'll be more than happy to help you out. So there you go. Next week on Speak Easy, we will answer Odiri Me's second part of the question, which is, 
what is the industry standard format for audio files. So if you want to learn about that as well, make sure you stay tuned for that video because that is coming up. And if you have questions for me as well, as long as they are voice over related, please do send it down the comment section down below, or you can send it via Instagram or Facebook, and I will go through it. And you never know, your question might just be featured in the upcoming episodes of Speak Easy. And before I let you go, I just want to thank you for your support. I truly appreciate it because let's be honest, it is because of your support that allows Speak Easy to keep on churning out content for freelance voiceovers, or those of you who are just starting out in the voice over industry and i'm here to help and with that i'll wish you all a fantastic day and i'll see you in the next video cheers